Hello everybody and welcome to the Clan Spotlight. Tonight we have the famous clan Sun Tzu and the man himself, Mr. Zhu. Uh, say hello, Mr. Zhu. Mm, hello, I'm Mr. Zhu. And, and he is I'm very, very tired. Sincere. And I would like to first thank you very much for joining me. I know it's like because of the time difference, because the seven hour time difference right now, it's a really unfortunate time with him. So thank him, thank him extra, and you have my personal thanks. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, um, without further ado, just to not keep him here too long, uh, let's begin. My first question that I want to ask, I, I ask it to all the other clans, is how did Sun Tzu got started? Can you tell us the story? No, it's a very long story, but maybe keeping the long story short. Um, I founded Sun Tzu back in 2010. Mm. as a Napoleon Total War clan. Um, basically, it all started, uh, we were playing scenario battles uh, in Napoleon multiplayer. Mm. I really enjoyed them. I found some people that also enjoyed them. And uh, I first joined a different clan. Mm -hmm. But I was very unhappy with how that clan was handled and everything. I was like, I'm going to make my own thing. And that's what I did, and that's how it started. And then, yeah, slowly, and uh, that... skipping to Arena. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we entered Arena uh, in Steam version, obviously, since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, we started putting together our Arena team. And mm -hmm. I think kind of important detail to mention is that we were a fully Polish clan back then. Hmm. And Sun Tzu International itself is very young, actually. It was only started in August last year, just before Gamescom. I see. And yeah, and we needed a strong foundation to kickstart our clan since we joined the stage so late, mm -hmm. because they're really established, a good, a big international mm -hmm. clan. So, like, why would you ever join Sun Tzu if there are so many better clans to choose from? Um, so yeah, we need like two pillars to build mm -hmm. upon to have that kickstart effect. So first pillar was the already established reputation of our Polish players, mm -hmm. and well, they obviously uh, all can speak English, uh, better or worse, but they can all speak and communicate effectively in English. Mm -hmm. And then the second pillar, we needed the right man for the job, basically, and we were lucky because we found a perfect one in Jojo, and he became our international division leader. And hmm. we are, yeah, we worked together, me and Jojo, and then other people who joined to well, get some sort of what it is today, and we are not stopping. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, we have seen the performance in the in the most recent tournaments. You guys have been organizing your own tournaments as well. And honestly, from the way it looks like, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but just looking at the tournament results, Sun Tzu is currently the number one most winning clan to date. Even though we did, uh, even though we did play against one another in the tournament, although it was kind of fun over there, and for that last battle, I'm still blaming the organizers, so <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> you know the one that I'm talking about. Um, but, uh, see... Uh, that's very fascinating that you mentioned like the older clans coming in and I really there was one thing that actually drew my attention which was that you felt like you were starting too late so you had to compensate for that well I don't think you started too late but the fact you're compensating for, trying to compensate for that has led to some great advancements like I would say if not the most well-known clan uh, right now is yours thanks to the tournament performance participations and tournament organizations, as you said, it is uh, it is going really good. So that has uh, you're saying that has shaped the clan's past, has shaped uh, how it was, its pillars, its principles. But what is the end goal for uh, San Tzu? Mm, the end goal. Yeah, no, like what is the long term goal? What would you say that if we achieve this? We, uh, we as a clan are a successful clan. What would you consider it to be an end goal? Mm. Like a long term Well, goal. we simply want to be the very best, like no one ever was. 
And well, a dream come true uh, would be to turn Sun Tzu into a real esports team. And I don't know, it's like esports is a meme, mm -hmm. but it's a funny meme. And yeah, but that's super, super far away, even if it's possible at all. Yeah. But would um, you say to catch them all is your real test? Um, I would say that I will uh, face every challenge along my way with courage. <laughs> oh, and yeah, the Pokemon theme song could really be out often. It has to be. It has to be. It is decreed. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love that. The um, I quite like it. I quite like it. The uh, So now that we have established the end goal, what is the current goal right now? I mean, I know you guys are working on building up your teams as well as organizing tournaments. But can you tell can you tell us the audience what is the Sun Tzu's short term goal like for example the next three months? Well, the shortest shortest term is to win the upcoming Sun Tzu Open One. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, it's gonna be hard because well, I won't be there, and I was there for my team in every uh, tournament before, so they just have to adapt. Like, mm -hmm. how do they? lead the team when I'm not there yeah. then they can definitely pull it off uh, I'm not like some super good player who is unreplaceable and everything it's it's just different for them now yeah I I think that's uh, that's a really good challenge after all at some point you need to drop off those uh, training wheels and if you intend to have multiple teams you will need to have uh, multiple leaders and having that versatility, without a doubt, is going to help. So I feel like you're making a lot of a structural progress when it comes to uh, when it comes to the team building. So those exercises are always good, even though they can be scary. And I and I felt that from your voice. A, there's always doubt when it comes to that, but I feel like it's just something that needs to be done. Uh, speaking of things that needs to be done, uh, one thing that both I and a few uh, and a few people, uh, a few of my friends were wondering: How does Sun Tzu function like internally? Is there like a hierarchy? Uh, what exactly? Uh, let's say people have joined. What kind of a hierarchy or system can they expect? Uh, well, I wouldn't really. Uh, compare Sun Tzu to uh, like a government or something. Uh, because, well, governments for countries, countries are a little bit right. bigger than clans. Um, but I would say we work similar to a small company. Hmm. And, well, we kind of have a boss, which is me. But right. um, I'm not like some alpha and omega in terms of the clan direction uh we all always uh, talk uh, together about um the direction of the clan we have mm -hmm. clan assemblies um so whenever there's something important uh for the future of our clan um we just gather everyone is invited and everyone's um arguments are weighted based on their own merits mm -hmm. so no matter if you are a clan leader no matter if you just joined if your argument is good and is valid you can influence how the clan will work and in the future based on uh, mm -hmm. the clan assembly yeah kind of like a meritocratic sort of thing like the original greek uh, this reminds me of like the original Greek democracy where, you know, people would go on to the go on to the stage and state their arguments, trying to sway, trying to sway the audience uh, here. Yeah, I see a bit something a bit more less demagoguery. I, I quite like that. I gotta admit it. Did I did I get that picture right or is it a little different? Mm, well, obviously, um... As with pretty much everything where it's involved uh, run, uh, a larger number of people, yeah. you won't be able to get everyone on exactly the same page. Like some people yeah. want to do this a little bit differently and this a little bit differently. And then someone has to come and decide if you are going the way A or the way B. Mm -hmm. And that's where the hierarchy comes in 
in Miu as a clan leader and, and uh, division leaders. But how it works as well, um, not really in the decision making, but then maybe in the execution and everyday clan work, is mm. that everyone has their own set of respons responsibilities um, like according to their skills. So this guy is good at mm. this, so well, you do this what you are good at. The other person is yeah. good at something different, then let that person do that thing that he's also good at. So everyone does what he's good at, and we complement each other that way. Yeah, I see. The um, that does sound a pretty rational method of uh, of managing the clan. It reminds me of like a rational meritocracy, if anything. So that one is uh, pretty good. I quite like it personally. Uh, the so my next question is gonna be. Uh, very much related to this one is what would you say what makes Sansu as a clan different than the others like this is like where how you could uh, like attract attract people and uh, put uh, just explain what what really sets you apart uh, what what would you say sets Sansu apart because everybody has got their own opinions about Sansu but let's get it from the leader Hmm. Well, to answer that question correctly, first I would need to know how other clans work. <laughs> well, thanks to your interviews, I sort of know how the other two clans work, and I have some insights, uh, inside knowledge from other clans. Um, but it's it's a very difficult question. It kind you of really is. Need, I may you really need to it, but... acknowledge. Well, if there's one thing that we are known for. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take let's change the question a little bit that way. That'll be Yellow Midrash, I think. Uh famous Yellow Midrash back from the Steam <laughs> days. Yes! <laughs> the famous Yellow Midrash. I know it. Yes, you are right. I remember from back in the Steam days. Tell us about it. Well, so basically uh, you know, it sounds stupid you know it totally does but it works but it works so As... it isn't stupid <laughs> it's about a team coordination uh surprising your opponent and flexibility mm -hmm. good moves on the map so it's only called your midrash um but it actually a lot of tactics and coordination and practice goes into it and yeah. well the definition of your midrash changed over over months and mm -hmm different iterations, but we still do your Midrash sometimes when you see a good opportunity. Yeah, it's, Sadly, it's a good tool to have, yeah. Yeah, I used to do that with artillery uh, back in the Steam version. Now I just refuse to play artillery on the principle because it's so damn broken. Yep. Uh, but that's a conversation on another day. Um, the audience already knows my opinion on artillery, so yes. <laughs> and yeah, and then again, capping the base with artillery is no longer an achievement since you can pack it up uh, yep. to your to your pocket. So that Thank doesn't really you. count anymore. Thank you. I'm not the only one who noticed that. <laughs> hey, it's yeah. not about capping bases, but. Yeah, it's about the, the engine, but as I said, maybe let's not dwell too much into it. It's already a meme in itself. Yeah. And another thing that I think would actually set Sons of Parna that I uh, well, kind of mentioned it, is the honorable play. So hmm. for me, exam for example, is I don't play artillery on the principle, even though during the Steam days I was on artillery main. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And also, we refuse, well, we not refuse, we just don't want to. We have a different philosophy on that. Uh, yeah. We don't want to play the game. We don't want to like dwell on the maths, the formulas behind the game. Yeah. We want to win thanks to having good teamwork, good synergy, and just good skill rather than figuring out whatever is the best in this current patch. Like, oh, if you do this and combo, and if you combine this ability with this ability, then you crush everyone and 
the other team loses and there is no you know, counter that, that right there that right there actually answers the question in my opinion just perfect just hits it on the head uh because I, one i never heard that even though a lot of people insinuate that just spelling it out that you rely on good people rather than figuring out what the flavor of the month is and just taking advantage of that i feel like that's both a very good a very good strategy because it does not rely on a singular thing and it cannot be countered because you're relying on good people on flexibility and i believe they can definitely set a clan apart now before we go to the big question which is how can people join uh, the reason i like to leave it to the uh, to later is because the uh, i want to people get a full picture of the clan before they decide so uh, my last question before that is how does sun Super prepare for the tournaments how do you guys train do you guys have any special training do research things like that uh what do you guys do to prepare uh, we have a training session every wednesday 8 p.m so mm -hmm. if you suddenly evolve if you have us on your friends list then you suddenly see oh 20 people are in private lobby oh uh, well, that's what's happening yeah and that's a regular training, whether it's a tournament or not. We just always train on Wednesdays. I um, see. Yeah, and that helps us grow synergy. Um, people who don't really play with each other before, for example, they, they get that uh, synergy there. Mm -hmm. If they don't speak in parties, because, well, we have like 30 active clan members, so obviously it's pretty much impossible for everyone to play with, with everyone on a regular that's basis. That's true. Uh, that is true, yeah. It, in fact, the uh, I would say, like, looking at the tournaments, you guys were bringing two, three teams uh, actively and very well performing as well, so that's not an understatement by any means. So that's, uh, that's very good. So now the big question, how can people join Sansu? I wanted to emphasize on the training I didn't finish. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's the regular training. Um, oh. We increase uh, the party size, let's say, to 20 then mm -hmm. instead of just four. Uh, so that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And when, when there's a tournament ahead, uh, then we start really practicing. Hmm. So right now the tournament is 7v7, which is mm -hmm. like, okay, even if there's 20 of us, we don't play 10v10, we play 7v7 and we simulate the tournament environment. Very so we play good. exactly as it would happen on the tournament. So we have like two teams locked in, you know, different channels. Yeah. And playing game by game by game by game, according to the tournament rules with draft and everything. So that really, really helps to prepare uh, people mentally for the tournament. Because uh, if you are taking the tournament seriously, mm -hmm. and we definitely do, we, there are also a lot of teams who just play for fun. And that's, well, I would also love to play for fun. That's why I also created Sun Tzu Invitational. Mm -hmm. So that Sun Tzu Invitational is a concept of a tournament that is for fun, that doesn't stress people. Because there's not a like a clan name behind them that yeah. they need to represent they are just mixed teams with made up names like naked fanatics yes um, so yeah you don't feel the pressure to perform but you still want to perform and just you then have fun uh, that is true and it was a great the last one i believe was a pretty big success it's still talked about it's uh, it and it was definitely a lot of fun so that was good yeah, and... I want to organize Sun Tzu Invitational 2 in the future, but let's focus on the next thing first. Exactly. Exactly. The uh, the next question the next question is so we have introduced the clan. We kind of painted like a pretty obvious, like direct picture of the clan, which I really liked. And now, could you tell us how can an outsider join the clan? What steps do they need to follow? Well. First, I will maybe start from who we are looking for. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for um, a good person and a good player. So that's the two qualities you need to have. Um, everything else is like a welcome addition. Well, so maybe Adolf not welcome Hitler addition, depending join. on what the addition is. So hmm? no Hitlers? No Hitlers, definitely. Oh, no Hitlers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Maybe if you shave your mustache, I don't know. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Can you can you please define on uh, what you mean as like uh, as like good in in terms of what? Well, in terms of good person, uh, we are putting a lot of emphasis on personality fit mm -hmm. because this is very important in the long run that people first and foremost need to enjoy their time in Sun Tzu, whatever they're doing, whether they're participating in, in tournaments or just playing parties with other good people and good players within the clan. Yeah. So that's very important to us and that lets us avoid conflicts. And if conflicts have arise, they are easier to solve because people are already like have this personality fit. Yeah. And in terms of good player, well, we need some experience. We are not going to teach you how phalanx works. You should figure it out for yourself before you try to join Sun Tzu. Yeah, so you need experience, um, teamwork, um, the other skills we can teach you. Yeah. But you need to have that solid basis because well, mm -hmm. go watch some guides, go, I don't know, train somewhere, watch our videos, our streams, or tournaments. That's a very, very good way to, to increase your skill by watching oh, something. Definitely. And, and yeah, um, we also um, often hang out in open channels uh, on our Discord. So that's if good. you have if you have a spot, you can join. Maybe we will invite you. Okay, so, so let's that's, say... that's how you can get to know us before even joining. And then the mm -hmm. application comes, right? So you just uh, fill in your application. Yeah. And uh, how do you get we... the application? Is there like a website, or do they come to you? How does that work? Um, the thing is that doesn't work because we uh, currently closed our recruitment for the mm -hmm. preparation time for the tournament. And after the tournament, we are going to come back with a new way to do that. Mm -hmm. But, well, we already have a few ideas on how to do it, Perfect. but it's not going to be the same as it was before. And we haven't settled on what it will be. Uh, after the tournament, and we are going to discuss it after the tournament because right now we are fully focused on preparing yeah. for the tournament. So sadly, uh, no direct link for that. Yeah. So currently, at Soon least, yeah. So currently, yeah, people can't join, but people who are watching it a few months down the line, uh, I, they can. Uh, I'm guessing they can contact one of the members, and I'm sure they'll um, be happy to direct. No, no, no. Just well, oh, yeah, obviously. Uh, talk to our members, but they would just direct you uh, yeah. where I have you now, which is our Discord server. Mm -hmm. There's a recruitment info channel. There you if you go. have any questions, go there, ask them, you'll be answered. Um, that's like the ultimate uh, answer because whenever you ask yeah. the question, you always get the freshest answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good way. I mean, you've got basically a directory for people to join your clan. That's uh, that's wonderful and very convenient. So the uh, yeah, that was the that was the what people were looking for. Now there are a few a few more questions that I'm wondering, especially with the what is going on recently. You guys and you mentioned before, you guys are organizing some tournaments. So how? How exactly do they do they work? Can you please tell us how can people join those tournaments, especially? Well, to join the tournament, if it's an uh, like regular tournament, uh, like Sun Tzu Open One right now, mm -hmm. uh, you obviously need a team. So it doesn't need to be a clan because I heard that question asked before as well. Um, just a team of seven people or whatever the size of the tournament is. Mm -hmm. um, plus the substitutes, if if you have uh, enough people to to provide those, mm -hmm. and if it's Suns Invitational, then Suns Invitational uh, has different rules of enrolling. Suns Invitational two, um, for example, like individual people can sign up. Yeah. Teams don't sign up. You sign up to Suns Invitational as well as you, yeah. basically. And then there will be team captains who will pick uh, from the pool of players who uh, signed up. 
That's uh... that, that's a little teaser for Sunzu Invitational too. Mm -hmm. So what do people need to do to join the Sunzu Invitational? Are they just gonna be contacted? Mm, no, uh, Sunzu Invitational two actually will be like open registration, mm -hmm. um, but it will be smaller in size. So for example, we'll have limited number of slots. I see. Um, because Sunzu Invitational two, uh, well and. Uh, Sunsu Invitationals in general are well, different tournaments. They're for fun and they're focused on producing good and enjoyable to watch content. Mm -hmm. So like with Sunsu Invitational 1, we would like to stream every single game, but that cannot be achieved if there is like 32 teams. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we will have a limited number of slots and I don't know, let's say it's 100 slots and 200 people sign up. Yeah. So that also means that it, there will be a sort of natural selection occurring mm -hmm. where good players will be invited by team captains to their teams. Mm -hmm. And those a little bit worse players won't be, which will be sad for them, but that's the sad reality. Yeah, that's that's the way things work. I wouldn't necessarily call them worse, just not as uh, popular or the ones that haven't proven themselves might be more accurate. After all, the uh, you're only as good as your last performance, and not just that, even if you're the best, you gotta show it. So that one, uh, that one is important. So get out there, play, and show yourselves. So did you have anything, any last thing to add? Uh, anything that we forgot to talk about? Well, yeah, I actually have something to add. Oh, go ahead. Like you, well, thank you very much for that. You're making us uh, out to be like a very, very good clan and everything. But for us, it's very important to stay humble, you know? Definitely, and definitely. We don't I... want to be like, oh, we are the best. Everyone else get good. No, no, no. Yeah, you're uh, absolutely We are definitely right. not the best. We are definitely not the best. Um, we are always uh, trying to improve. Like the the goal is to achieve perfection, but this yeah. goal can never be reached. But yeah. that doesn't mean that we are uh, not going to try. Yeah. And you always try to improve uh, to improve to achieve perfection, and you'll never achieve perfection. Therefore, you'll always keep improving. So that's sort of the like a vicious, vicious philosophy. Mm -hmm. yeah, philosophy behind us as well. Uh, yeah, you're we... uh, you're absolutely right. After all, the uh, we know nobody is perfect, and the only thing that achieves that will always achieve victory is making no mistakes, which is an extract from the Art of War, actually. But well, you know, I kind of had to had to show, kind of push that in somehow. Though, yeah, I found it some some principles found in the book in the Art of War. Uh, yeah, I at some point I actually had it completely memorized because I had it on my phone. I just read it and reread it all the time. It is wonderful. It is wonderful principles that uh, everybody should everybody should read and learn from because they're applicable for just about anywhere where there is conflict. And I really liked uh, the attitude uh, that you have mentioned that the humility, after all, we both have seen so many times that people's ego getting in the way of their improvement, there can be great individual players, great individual clans, but they just refuse to be humble and get into that constant improvement mentality and over time they stagnate and die. So it's I believe the way to avoid that is to aim for perfection and improve that. So I definitely agree with you on that. So yeah, that was the that was Sansu everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Zhu, for joining. It was great pleasure to have you. And even though we have and uh, we have been fighting one another in the tournaments, I really love the the sport sportsmanship that's going on, this uh, friendly rivalry going on in whichever team I participate in. I really enjoy to play against you guys. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. You are very much welcome.